So a quick intro for those of you who do not know who I am. I am Kristen Poborski. I am a content expert and I help healers, coaches, business and life coaches, and course creators dial in their content for social media and their courses so that they can scale and grow their businesses and work less hours. Okay, so let's dive into uh, step number one, and it's all about um, validating your idea before you create your course. So of course you're going to want to pick a topic, right? And you're going to want to name it, you're going to want to price it, you're going to create an outline for it. But what you want to do before you create it is validate it. And what I mean by validate it is, is you want to sell it. You want to do like a beta launch, founding members launch. It's what I do every time before I create a course so that I don't waste my time on something that's not going to sell, right? You want to get that down first and then get paid pretty much to create your first course, okay? So you will pick your profitable topic, you'll um, plan your content, and you're going to pre-sell before you create your content, okay? So that's pretty much what it is. And when I talk about planning your content, it's not like you got to have everything there. You pretty much just need, um, it's what I use to create in my uh, milestone um, framework, and I use this all the time. You create milestones. Um, how to get to the milestones to get to the end point of where your course is supposed to take them. And then you just list all the steps in between. And if you need help with that, I got a little freebie training down below where I walk you through the milestone framework so that you can get your course out of your head onto paper in 30 minutes or less. Okay. So the link's right below in case you're interested in that. So number two, this is key. What you want to do all the time, even before you're creating your course, is you always want to be um, nurturing and building your list because a lot of people think they build the course first. And what happens is they get it out there and they have nobody to pre-sell it to. And so it just sits there in the drawer with no list. You don't have anybody to launch it to. You can't. So People mistakenly think, oh, I'm going to build a course, put it on there, spend all this time, and nobody wants it. So that's why you want to pre-sell it, and you need to have a list so that you validate your idea before you put your blood, sweat, and tears into it. And in order to do that, you need a list. So you definitely always need to be building your list and have people on your list so that when you are going to launch it or pre-sell it, you got somebody to launch it to. Saves a lot of headache doing it this way. Okay, then once you know that you've got an idea, you got a list, how do you launch it to them? Well, the way I've learned to do it and saved me a lot of headache is doing the founding members beta test launch, okay? I've got my course done, I got my outline. All you need is a simple checkout page and some emails, right? I've seen this done, I've done it myself. I've seen other people do it. You take people, you just take people through that and you explain that um, you want to um, use this, this beta test or whatever you're gonna, they're gonna pay for it, but they're not gonna pay the full price. They're gonna pay a lesser price and they're gonna get the special deal. They're gonna understand this is the only time they're gonna get it at that price. And in return, they're gonna give you feedback and testimonials because it's such a darn cheap price. And a couple of things that this helps you do. A, it gives you confidence that people can get results with your program. And number two, it gives you those pieces that you need when you go into a launch mode and you really do a full-fledged launch at a higher price. You've got those things that you need, the case studies, the testimonials, and the feedback so that you create a course that you know is going to launch and sell for you. So that's pretty much how you create a course and sell it 
when you're a beginner. That's just the high level. And again, if you need help getting that course out of your head and onto paper, I have a free training using my uh, milestone method, and it'll get your course out of your head and onto paper in 30 minutes or less. I've got the link right below. But you've got the steps now on how to create a course if you're a beginner, okay? And I don't want you, I want you to remember, don't waste all your time creating a huge course with no list and launch it out there and think that they're gonna come. I would rather have you just do the easier way as I outline here and build your list and get a beta test out there because you gotta get your feet wet and this is the perfect way to get paid to do your course. Okay, so let's go through um, question number one because this is key to getting a great experience for your, the first experience is always important. Did your mom always say that to you? Like, you know, the first impression is always the best. It must be your best impression. It's a lasting impression. So this is why you want to create an awesome onboarding experience. And people want to know, how do you create one? I had that question too, right? How do you create an onboarding sequence that wows them, right? So immediately what you want to do is once they pay you, you want to deliver the instructions on how to access the course, right? You definitely want to do that. You don't want to make them wait. You want to give them instant access. You want to give them that. You want to give them a simple roadmap. And if your course is not live yet, you should just ex give them what to expect. Like when are all the modules going to be open and a timeline. That's a great thing for you if you're creating your first course, you're doing a beta test, you kind of need to give them some dates. So those are the things you want to welcome. Like a welcome video is a great way to do them. A roadmap, immediately access to the course, all within the first day. That will give people a great, great onboarding experience. The other thing that I like to do within the first week when I do a launch or I bring in new students, like a group of students, is I want to do an onboarding session just for that. Walk them through everything. Go through the same things that you went through in those emails. You definitely need to do that because not everybody reads everything and some people learn a different way. They're better learning from a video or live and they can ask questions. I find that people, one of the biggest stumbling blocks is people have a hard time logging in and accessing the content, okay? Just, it's hard for them. Don't know why, but that's a key thing that you want to make sure that you cover in your onboarding because that seems to be a trip up for everybody, right? Because you want them in there immediately getting to work. Okay, question number two, how do you get how to help them get an ROI out of their um, out of their investment in your course? Okay, so one of the biggest things is that people do not implement. So, what I have uh, experienced is I have implementation se sessions for my people. Right, I give them an opportunity, I hold a space, they get to come and implement with me. What I tell them to do is time block. So this is what you want to tell them to do. Go through the course, block out time each week where they learn. Then they um, week one, they learn. Week two, they implement. And if they can time it with your implementation time, even better. So I do two times a month where they get to come and implement with me. And it's great for me because I get work done while they're doing it. So, um, you know, it's just focus work time for everybody. So week one, they learn. Week two, they implement. Week three, they implement again. And week, I mean, they learn. And then week four, they implement, okay? And if you can get your students in that mindset or teach them how to learn, implement, learn, implement and not skip ahead and keep learning and not implementing, that's going to help them really get their ROI out of the course. If they just move through it and they implement, 
and they're getting somewhere, they're going to get better results and they're going to get their ROI out of learning what you're teaching, right? And that's what you want. You want them to be raving fans, give you uh, testimonials, great feedback, refer your friends, refer their friends to you and to be case studies so that they can inspire other people to purchase from you because they can see in other people, um, if they can see in other people that got results, they will see for themselves that they too can get results. Okay, so that's it. That's why it is so important and it's a great way to get help your students to get their return on investment out of your course, okay? So if you've got a course in your brain and you're having problems getting it on the paper, grab my free training using my milestone framework, the link's down below, and I'll help you get your course ideas, your whole outline for your course, out of your brain, onto paper using my unique 